from evolution it is 2 mark 1 question and 5 mark 1 question therefore having a total weightage of 7 marks the father of evolution is charles darwin or charles darwin is called as the father of evolution no need of writing so much just in a word you can write charles darwin it is enough analogous organs they are dissimilar in appearance but they are similar in function Hello everyone, a warm welcome to today's session on the introduction to second PUC biology syllabus as well as question paper and practical syllabus. I'm Dr. Divya, biology faculty, Vidyashram Pri University College, Mysore, Temple of Excellence. So first we need to know what is the textbook that is prescribed by the PU board for second PUC biology. So the textbook is NCERT textbook which is followed everywhere to maintain uniformity in the diagram and all that this particular textbook has to be followed that is NCERT textbook. So what are the contents that are there in the NCERT textbook which will be your syllabus for the second PUC biology we shall look into. So we have unit 6 so uh, the first 5 units you have studied in your first PUC biology from the NCERT textbook right. So here it starts from unit 6 wherein we will be studying entirely about reproduction. So reproduction in plants and human beings and the reproductive health measures that has to be taken all that related to reproduction comes under this particular unit wherein you will have chapter 1 which is reproduction in organisms, chapter 2 that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants because flowering plants they exhibit a mode of sexual reproduction wherein seeds are set right. But apart from that, there are some flowering plants which also reproduce asexually. About that you will study in the first chapter. But in the second chapter, only sexual reproduction in the flowering plants will be studied. And next in chapter 3, you will move on to studying about the reproduction in humans, that is human reproduction. And what are the different hormones involved? How does reproduction occur in humans? Everything comes under this particular chapter and the fourth chapter contains reproductive health. So in reproductive health you will study about various measures to improve the reproductive or fertility of an individual and if an individual is infertile what are the different techniques or methods that can be followed in order to attain reproductive capability all that shall be studied in this particular and what are the different contraceptive methods that are there all that comes under this particular chapter of reproductive health. Moving on to unit 7. So unit 7 is entirely about genetics and one chapter you have about evolution. So genetics whenever we talk about genetics we have to remember Gregor Mendel right because he is the father of genetics he was the first person to put forward his experiments related to genes which he called as factors wherein he said that from the parents to the offsprings the characters are forwarded right. So therefore we'll study chapter 5 principles of inheritance and variation under this there is this chapter entirely consists about what are the different experiments that was made by Mendel on garden pea plant and the different laws that was proposed by Mendel and various examples we shall study in this particular chapter. And chapter 6 is molecular basis of inheritance. In this chapter we shall move to DNA. So Gregor did not know about DNA or genes and all that but he said there are some factors which are carried from the parents to offspring. But moving further molecular basis of inheritance chapter is a bit advanced wherein you will study in particular where the genes are located, you will study entirely about DNA and how from these genes proteins are produced, all that you shall study wherein you will study about different mechanisms such as transcription, translation, replication mechanism and one important topic that is very interesting that is DNA fingerprinting, all that you will study here. Next chapter is evolution. So evolution is a very interesting chapter who doesn't know about Darwin, right? He is considered to be the father of evolution because he was the first person to say that evolution is very important for the changes to occur in the planet and how human beings evolved from apes and not just that, Darwin, he was very interested in 
he was a voyager who used to visit various islands so whatever he noticed in those islands whatever changes he noticed in the animals of those islands he put forward his theories based on that so all that we shall study here and we shall study about the big bang theory and how exactly the present day atmosphere got formed because now in the atmosphere we have carbon dioxide oxygen nitrogen all that right but earlier the atmosphere was not like this when the earth had begin but eventually because of volcanic eruption and all that how the atmosphere um, got formed properly with all the gaseous elements all that we'll study under evolution it is a very interesting chapter next moving on to unit 8 which is entirely about biology and human welfare so here under this unit we have chapter 8 that is human health and diseases so what are the different diseases that are incurred by humans how to prevent those diseases and about drug abuse how to avoid uh, getting into bad habits all that is discussed in this particular chapter of human health and diseases and not just that after that in chapter 9 we have strategies for enhancement in food production so for human welfare knowing about human health and diseases all that is also very important and apart from that knowing about the different strategies in order to increase the food production is also very very important because we all know that the population of the world is growing drastically right and in order to meet the food needs of that particular population a lot of advanced technology has to be put forth in developing a new variety of hybrid plants so that the population should not starve or there should not be scarcity of food. So all those strategies in order to increase the food production we shall study under this particular chapter 9 and in chapter 10 this is also about human welfare wherein how are microbes used in human welfare this is a very fascinating chapter wherein you will be very keen to know and you will be very shocked to know that how those small minute microorganisms which are not visible to our naked eye how they are used in manufacturing various things you might be curious enough when you come to know that our detergents that we use to wash clothes they contain a compound and that particular compound is extracted from a microorganism and that compound actually helps in removing stains from the clothes so it is very interesting right likewise there are various examples that they have given under this particular chapter how microbes are used in human welfare not just that even it is very interesting to know microbes are also used in the cleaning of the water sewage water whatever is there clean those water make it pure and therefore use it for domestic purposes so it's very interesting this particular chapter next moving on to the next unit that is unit 9 which is biotechnology biotechnology and microbiology are two important fields which have a very vast scope so it will actually inculcate an interest in the students because the students will be very curious and it will also make them take up biotechnology as the future subject of study so therefore these chapters are very important microbiology and biotechnology because it is quite interesting as well so under biotechnology there is chapter 11 which is biotechnology principles and processes so various principles involved in biotechnology various processes or methodologies that are used in biotechnology all that we shall study here so chapter 12 it is biotechnology and its applications so biotechnology how is biotechnology so biotechnology means it is nothing but the usage of genes right so by using genes how exactly a transgenic plant a hybrid plant can be produced how a disease resistant plant can be produced all that is quite fascinating to study in the class right classroom which will actually put your interest towards research field so all these chapters are very very important in bio biology that is under the unit biotechnology unit 9 next last unit unit 10 it is ecology this is a general um, unit wherein contains a lot of general topics which we see every day in our life so it is easy to learn and understand so first we have organisms and population as chapter 13 so under organisms and population you will study about how 
what are the reasons for the increase in the population and what is growth rate, what is death rate and how does the uh, growth of a population increase. So all that different strategies and all that everything you will learn under this particular chapter. Next is about ecosystem. So under ecosystem you shall learn about the different types of ecosystem that exist. So it is also a common general topic that is there and it is quite interesting and next chapter 15 is biodiversity and conservation so here you shall learn about biodiversity you shall learn about various case studies that are involved to conserve biodiversity so all those case studies are very interesting and those case studies also will make you feel as if you need to contribute something towards biodiversity so therefore this chapter is quite interesting so different conservation methods are there wherein you have in situ conservation and ex situ conservation all that you shall study in under this particular chapter and the last chapter chapter 16 is environmental issues so how can you solve the environmental issues in your lower classes you might have studied about air pollution water pollution noise pollution in general right and how to prevent them you would have studied in general but this particular chapter is a bit advanced wherein you'll use what are the different instruments that have been developed in order to prevent air pollution how can you control water pollution all that were quite uh, a lot of interesting facts they have put under this particular chapter with a few case studies so all that we sh we can study under environmental issues and you'll come to know about ozone depletion how to prevent ozone depletion and all that so this is about the syllabus for second pc biology theory wherein you will be studying 16 chapters and all the 16 chapters are quite easy and interesting if you concentrate very well in the class so therefore 16 chapters you need to study Next, moving further, this is the blueprint of second PUC biology. So, this blueprint is usually released by the PU board, but during the time of exams, it tends to change. Can't say it may be retained or it may change, but as of now, this is the blueprint that has been released. Here, it is very easy. Why blueprint is because looking at the blueprint, you'll have you'll understand how much you need to concentrate on a particular chapter. Instead of blindly studying everything because it doesn't mean that you should not study other chapters. In the classroom when you are sitting inside the class and listening to your teacher it is the time for you to understand every chapter, understand the concepts, everything. But when it comes to exam you always need to do smart work because exam is finally about scoring good marks right so therefore there you need to do smart work and if you need to do smart work you need to understand the blueprint so in blueprint they'll tell you from which chapter what is the weightage in each chapter what questions will come out of each chapter so when i say what questions mean how many one marks two marks three marks and five marks will come out of each chapter so here you have Chapter 1 Reproduction in Organism wherein the 1 mark question 1 will come and 2 mark 1 and 3 marks. So therefore 5 marks will not come from this particular chapter. Likewise you have chapter 2 that is Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. So in Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants for 1 mark you have 2 questions. 2 mark 1 question, 3 mark 1 question and 5 mark 1 question. Therefore the weightage is 12. For chapter 1 the weightage was 6. So don't say it's just 6 and you neglect the chapter. No, it is very important because compulsorily few questions will come out of it. Next you have human reproduction wherein from human reproduction there is no one mark question that is asked but you'll have two mark question, three mark and five marks question. Therefore the total weightage being 10 marks out of this chapter and then we have chapter 4 that is reproductive health. So under reproductive health you'll have one mark one question and uh, five mark one question therefore a total weightage of six marks. So this chapter whatever five marks is there study hardly I think it contains only two or three five marks in that particular chapter. So those three five mark question if you study any one will surely come out of it. So therefore one mark one question and five mark one question there is no two mark or three mark from this particular chapter. Next, moving on to the next unit, we have chapter 5, Principles of Inheritance and Variation. So, under this particular chapter, for one mark, you have two questions. 
for two marks there are two questions for three marks one and five marks one it carries a weightage of 14 this chapter is also quite interesting and easy wherein you have mendel's law uh, mendel's law of segregation law of independent assortment you'll have monohybrid cross test cross so for that there are various examples that are provided which you have to do using a checkerboard so if you learn that very well there is no need to buy hard that because if you sit in the class and concentrate to your teacher and understand the concept very easily in the exam also if you don't read also you can do it on your own because it is like a puzzle the topics is like a puzzle there so that is why this chapter if you read no very easily you can get 14 marks out of it and next you have we have a uh, six that is molecular basis of inheritance from that for one mark one question three mark one question and five mark one question total weightage being 14 so molecular base of inheritance is everything about dna this also carries 14 marks next we have evolution so from evolution it is two mark one question and five mark one question therefore having a total weightage of seven marks next chapter eight human health and diseases under human health and diseases there is one mark two questions 2 mark 1 question, 3 mark 1 and 5 mark 1, therefore carrying a total weightage of 12 marks. And uh, strategies for enhancement of food production, it is 2 mark 1 question, 3 mark 1 and 5 mark 1, therefore a total weightage of 10 marks. Next we have microbes in human welfare. So next chapter, chapter 10 microbes in human welfare, from that there is one mark two questions and five mark one question total weightage of seven next there is chapter 12 that is biotechnology principles and processes out of that you have one mark one question two mark one question and five mark one question carrying a total weightage of eight marks next we have biotechnology and its application so from this particular chapter you'll get one mark one question and five mark one question therefore carrying a total weightage of six and next is organisms and population so under organisms and population there is three mark one question and five mark one question no two and one marks out of this therefore carrying a total of eight marks Next is ecosystem. So from ecosystem, you have one mark. So next is ecosystem. So from ecosystem, you have three marks, one question and five mark, one question. Therefore, carrying a total weightage of eight marks. And in biodiversity and in biodiversity and conservation, there is one mark, two questions, two mark, one question. Therefore, carrying a total of four marks from biodiversity and conservation there is no three and five marks from it only one and two mark questions are asked last chapter environmental issues it is there is no one mark or two mark you have three mark one question and five mark one question with a total weightage of eight marks and therefore you by looking at this you can understand that more amount of weightage is for chapter six that is molecular basis of inheritance and chapter five that is principles of inheritance and variation wherein each of these two chapters carries 14 marks each so if you keep this accordingly if you study say for examples from some places they have not asked two marks some places they have not asked three marks so therefore you can just skip those three mark questions and two marks so this blueprint again i'm telling you it's just a blueprint that has been released for 2021-22 it might get retained or it might change until it gets it, it is retained in the PU or until it's changed in the PU uh, by the PU board we'll have to follow this blueprint itself next moving further the distribution of marks that is for your theory exam how is the marks actually distributed so the maximum marks you'll be writing the paper for is 100 but theory that is uh, 100 means uh, 70 for theory and 30 for practicals so, so only for 70 marks you'll be writing your theory examination for 70 marks where in practical examination is for 30 marks total the paper will be for 100 marks so including your practical and your theory 
joining both you have to score 35 then only it is considered pass don't think that you will not do your practical well if you don't do your practicals or if you don't attend the practicals or don't do your practicals well theory compulsorily you will have to score 35 it will not be 21 so therefore both theory and practicals to pass to gather the marks that you have to score is 35 marks here so there will be uh, general instructions that are there for this particular paper. So the paper has actually, theory paper is divided into four parts, A, B and C. So all the parts are compulsory. You have to write, don't skip it. Don't think that you write extra questions, marks will be given. No, how many questions you are supposed to write? In each part, only so much you need to write. So all the parts are compulsory and diagrams wherever necessary you need to draw diagrams sometimes they might ask a diagram sometimes they may not may not ask but if the diagram is necessary for that particular question in spite of them not asking you need to draw and when you draw the diagram labeling is very very important if you draw the diagram very neatly and don't label it then it will be considered a zero therefore draw diagrams wherever necessary and unlabeled diagrams or illustrations will not attract any marks. So you need to be very, very careful with that. Next, moving further, this is the model question paper, your question paper for your final exam, how it looks. This question paper was changed last year, that was 2021 to 22. Hope it gets retained in 2023 as well. So here it is very easy for you because earlier in the question paper, for one mark, the 10 questions were given and compulsorily you had to write 10. But now it is changed. Like one mark, 15 questions will be given and any 10 you need to answer out of it. It is easy, right? For your benefit, the PU board has changed the pattern like this and hope it gets retained. So as I told you, the question paper is divided into four parts, wherein under part A, you have 15 questions out of which you need to answer any 10. So therefore, answering 10 will fetch you 10 marks, wherein each question will carry one mark. So you can answer the question in either in a word or in a sentence. It depends on what type of question is asked. So either in a word, say for example, who is called as the father of evolution? No need of writing and wasting your time as the father of evolution is Charles Darwin or Charles Darwin is called as the father of evolution. No need of writing so much. Just in a word you can write Charles Darwin. It is enough. But there are some questions where you need to define and write, where you need to write it in the form of a sentence. Say for example, you have uh, state the function of filiform apparatus. There you have to write the function of filiform apparatus is to guide the pollen tube through the micropylar region into the that is through the synergies or through the micropylar region so you have to frame a sentence so wherever one word is sufficient finish it off in one word wherever you need to write a sentence write it in a sentence so therefore here as i told you 15 questions will be given out of which 10 you need to answer write the question number correctly in the final exam the invigilators, whoever are there, they will, or the evaluators, they will not have the patience to search the question number for you. So therefore, write the question number very, very correctly, unnecessarily, don't lose marks there. Next, moving on to part B. So part B here again, that is extra questions are given, wherein 10 questions are given, out of the 10, have to write 5. So that is also easy. They have doubled the number of extra options here this time. Uh, that is in the previous year they have doubled it but earlier all this was not there. Any 5 you have to write out of 10. Again here you might notice here what they have done is for 2 marks if you can see name the vegetative propagules in potato and water hyacinth. They have asked 2 questions under this right wherein if you write the answer for potato you will get 1 mark for water hyacinth you will get 1 mark. That is how they can divide and ask. So that is why Sometimes in the blueprint, they might ask, one mark will not be asked from this particular chapter. But in spite, you'll have to study one mark. Why? Because they can 
combine one mark one mark and ask a question for two marks so that is why you need to be careful there here also say for example give one example for so if you write an example for this you'll get one mark here also one mark so likewise they can ask the question so under this out of the 10 questions you need to answer any five and each of the question carries two marks therefore five into two that is this particular part b has a weightage of 10 marks in this particular question paper. Next, moving further, part C. So, part C, again here, 10 questions are given out of which you need to answer any 5. So, here also, as you can see, this is a 3 mark question. Here also, they have asked, mentioned the role of promoter, terminator, cistron in transcription unit. All these are 1 marks. So, if you write this answer, 1 mark, you will get this one, 1 mark, this one, 1 mark. Therefore, fetching you 3 marks. So, that is how they will split the questions and ask for different weightage of marks. So, you have to be very, very careful here. So, therefore, this particular Part C has a weightage of 15 marks. Each question carry 3 marks, wherein out of the 10 you have to write, therefore 5 into 3, 15 marks. Next, moving further, we have part D. In part D, it will be divided into two sections, section 1 and section 2. Both the section also, the questions are for 5 marks only. So, here also, you have to answer any 4 out of the given question. So, 8 questions are given. Out of the 8, any 4 you need to answer here. So, here also if you can see how they have divided, they have divided it as 3 mark and 2 mark. So, if you write about pollination and valisne area, you will get 3 mark and if you write about the wall of the pollen grain, you will get 2 mark. In this particular section of part D, for 5 marks, they can ask diagrams also. So, wherever they have asked diagram, don't draw diagrams like a small stamp or something please draw big diagrams and label it properly so if it is for five marks at least 10 labeling has to be done because that is how the scheme would have been divided so they, they have asked sketch and label the sectional weave of human female reproductive system so they have asked various questions and if you can see here here also they have asked questions in the form of two mark and three marks they have split it as two marks and three marks for five marks here. So, this is about section 1. Next under part D, under section 2, this is also for 5 marks. Each question carries 5 marks wherein 6 questions will be given. Out of that you need to write 3. So, in each of these, please write the question number properly. Don't unnecessarily lose marks. Here they have, so say for example, question number 45. They have divided it as 1 mark, 1 mark, 1 mark, one mark and one mark. Can you see one one mark they have asked five questions. So that is why that is what happens in biology. You have to be very very careful when you are studying. Everything is important even though they would have not said it in the blueprint. Everything will be important sometimes. So even here also say for example they have asked for question number 48 answer the following wherein two questions they have asked. Second question again they have divided into two questions wherein this will be for three marks three advantages of uh, predation for an ecosystem if you write three advantages three marks and if you write the interaction between uh, sea anemone and clownfish one mark flower and pollinator species visiting it one mark therefore two marks so three plus two five marks so that is how they divide and are so you need to be very very careful read the question twice thrice until you understand properly and then write the answer Writing the question number, don't forget and don't forget to label. And also in biology, please don't write in paras. Unnecessarily don't waste your time writing in paras. Five mark question, you, they ask, write at least six points. Write in the form of points because it will look neat. Simply like an art student, writing in huge, huge paras will not fetch you mark. Filling your paper unnecessarily will not fetch you mark. What content you write there in the form of points will fetch you good marks. And also when writing, say for example, there is a question about uh, differentiate between menstrual cycle and estrus cycle. So whenever the word differentiate comes, make two columns. One end write menstrual cycle, other end write estrel cycle and write the differences under it. Don't simply write even that in the form of paras. And wherever 
there are side headings write it very neatly write under that the answer so maintain the question maintain your answer script very very neat so that the examiner will feel like giving you marks so neatness is very very important in your answer script as well along with writing the good answers for the given questions so this was about the question paper for the theory next moving on to the syllabus for practicals who doesn't love practicals right especially biology practicals wherein you'll be studying about different things under the microscope you'll be taking sections and all that it is quite interesting so there are quite a lot of interesting topics and experiments that they have given wherein around 21 experiments are there what are those we shall look into so you have exercise one or experiment one that is reproductive parts of a flower wherein you'll be studying about the different parts of a flower that are present in hibiscus so that is also quite interesting next we have pollen germination so under pollen germination you will collect the pollen grains from the anther of a particular flower you will dust it in sucrose solution you will wait for few minutes and you will see how the pollen tube has come out of it so that is also quite interesting experiment experiment 3 you have pollen tube growth and stigma this also a particular flower stigma we need to take we need to boil it so that it becomes soft and then you need to put it in stain cotton blue stain smash it observe it under the microscope very beautifully you can see the pollen tube growing towards the stigma that is through the stigma growing so it is a very nice experiment next we have mitosis and onion root tip so mitosis you have learnt about mitosis cell division right in your first PUC but the exercise or the experiment you'll have it in your second PUC so go through your first PUC theory textbook before coming to this particular lab experiment mitosis and onion root tip it is very interesting very beautifully in the cells you can see different stages very nicely you can observe the chromosomes and all that which is quite interesting this particular exercise next we have staining of nucleic acid wherein taking the onion peel you have to stain the nucleus and you have to see what is the position of the nucleus how many nucleus are there inside the cell what is the shape of the cell all that you will study here next is texture of soil to find out whether the soil is sandy clay loamy all that this experiment will let you know about it next is water holding capacity of the soil so under water holding capacity of the soil how much capacity the soil has to hold water because water holding is very very important for the soil right because plants need water saying that can the plants grow in a flooded environment no so therefore how much water is retained in the soil will determine how well a plant can grow in that particular soil so therefore that is why this experiment is very very important next experiment eight that is ph of water and soil sample wherein we'll be taking two samples and we'll be finding the ph of that whether it is acidic basic or neutral next is turbidity of water how clean the water is that we can find out by finding out how much sediment has settled at the bottom of the water so measuring the amount of sediment we can say whether the water is clear or whether it is turbid or not clear next is living organisms in water sample wherein you'll be taking water samples from lakes ponds and all that putting it under the microscope wherein you can see different phytoplanktons and zooplanktons and all that living organisms there which you'll be observing under the microscope Next you have plant population density and frequency which is measured by using a quadrant method which is measured that particular experiment is based on that. Next we have controlled pollination method and uh, this controlled pollination method is, is nothing but to prevent cross pollination there are two important methods that are followed one is emasculation and bagging how it is done that you will learn in this particular experiment of controlled pollination next we have gametogenesis experiment after gametogenesis we have meiosis experiments all these are slides next you have female gametophyte development this is also a slide will be kept which you need to observe and next is blastula of mammals again a photograph or a slide of this can be kept 
Mendel's law of segregation. This you would have studied in your theory. The same thing you need to do it in the practicals as well. And this one also Mendel's law of independent theory also you would have studied about it. Next is pedigree chart. Pedigree chart while studying about human health and diseases. There we study about pedigree chart. So the same thing goes on well with practical as well. Next is common disease causing organisms. So we have few organisms such as entamoeba, plasmodium, trichophyton and all that. So you will study about them either in the form of a chart, a photograph, either in the form of a chart, a photograph or a microscopic slide. You will have to look at it and identify and name the disease that particular organism causes. Next experiment 21 is about ecological adaptations of xeric and hydric plants. So different examples have been given in the lab manual. So based on that, what are the xeric and hydric adaptations of those plants? We need to learn about it. This is also photographs and charts. Next is ecological adaptations of xeric and hydric animals. So here the xeric and hydric animals, how capable are they in adapting to a particular environmental situation? What are the different adaptive features or structures that they have developed? All that you will be studying in exercise number 22. And the last exercise 23 wherein you will be studying about the homologous and the analogous organs in both plants and animals. So homologous organs, they are similar in appearance but different in function. Analogous organs, they are dissimilar in appearance but they are similar in function. So various examples are there which we will take up and by showing the chart, this will be explained to you in the laboratory. These are the different 23 experiments that are there for your practicals of second PUC biology. Next, moving to the practical examination question paper. As I told you, the experiments will be divided as A to F, which will carry 20 marks, a total of 20 marks. And then you have VIVA, wherein questions will be asked. So 30 questions will be provided by the biology forum itself. From those 30 questions, four questions will be asked. Those four, if you answer very well, you will get four marks for that. Practical record, maintain your practical record very well so that it will easily fetch you six marks. Therefore, your entire practicals is for 30 marks. So, scoring 30 is very important here because practicals is quite interesting and easy as well. Therefore, it will increase your percentage in the theory exam as well. So, it is very important. Next, moving further, we shall discuss about the question paper of the practical exam. How does the question paper look. So the question paper actually the experiments are divided as experiment A and F wherein your question number one will have experiment A. So this is nothing but pollen germination. So ex, uh, particular question number one or experiment A it is luck basis. Four chits will be given that is uh, in uh, four experiments will be written in the chit. You have to pick the chit whichever experiment you get that you have to perform so that is about experiment A. So you have uh, that is pollen germination experiment is there. Then you have to prepare uh, that is uh, you have to show the pollen tube growth. That is also an experiment under this. Then you need to prepare uh, that is um, you have to take the cross section of the ovary and you have to show uh, the number of ovules in it and what type of placentation is there that is also there and also one more experiment is there that is nuclear staining. So these four out of that any one will each student will get based on your luck that is chit system. So this is about question number one experiment A. Next moving on to question number two. Question number two is compulsory for all this question will come wherein it is about mitosis. So everything will be prepared and the onion root tip will be given to you. Your work is to squash it properly, put it under the microscope, call the examiner, show him the stage, identify the stage and tell him. So that is about this particular question number two and it is for five marks. So question number one is also for five marks. Question number two is also for five marks marks. Next question number three is experiment C. So here two samples will be kept. You need to sample A and sample B. You need to find out the pH, draw the table and note down the pH and say whether it is acidic or neutral or basic depending on whatever pH you get. Next is question number four that is experiment D. So experiment D is slides wherein the slides of the uh, diseased organism, the slides of the organism causing diseases will be kept. 
you have to identify and you have to uh, give reasons for that. So it will carry three marks. So only one one will be kept here. Next question number five is experiment E. Again here a specimen. This question number five is actually the dis about disease causing organism. Question number four is any specimen can be kept that you need to identify and you need to write two reasons for that. Question number um, E is about disease causing organism wherein you will have to identify the organism, write the name, scientific name of the organism and you have to write the disease it causes. So that will fetch you three marks. Next is question number six experiment F. Here also charts will be kept related to homologous organs, analogous organs and uh, related to the xeric adaptations, hydric adaptations all that you need to identify and you need to write comments on it. And the question number seven is viva questions wherein 30 questions out of the 30 question any four will be asked. So it is for four marks. So your question number five and six is for two marks each. Next you have practical record. So practical record will fetch you six marks or total of 30 marks for practical. So this is about the question paper pattern for the practical exam. And whatever questions they have given here, say for example, first three questions, whatever has been mentioned here, only that will be asked out of this. Next is scheme of evaluation. How is the evaluation done? So what you need to write in your answer script. Don't unnecessarily write too much in the practicals because you'll have two hours. In the two hours, you'll have to perform the experiment, write, finish your viva, everything. So therefore, you need to be quick. So how much you need to write? how the evaluation will be done all that you need to know about it say for example question number one so this is i told you chit based you have to pick up whatever experiment comes to you you have to perform so you have to uh, write um, a result whatever you have got you have to write it so next question number two that is experiment b here this is uh, onion root tip will be given you have to squash it and you have to do the experiment and you have to mention what stage you have got you have to write in your answer script what stage you have got next uh, experiment c that is question number three so as i told you samples will be provided sample a and b you have to find the ph you have to put a neat tabular tabular column in your uh, answer script and write under samples write sample a and sample b then you have to write the ph value and you have to write the remarks so what is it whether it is acidic basic or neutral you need to write next question number d as i told you it either slide models photographs or specimens anything can be kept so this is like uh, usually ts of mammalian testes will be asked ts of mammalian ovary will be asked and ts of blastula meiosis slides all these will be kept which you need to identify and give two reasons for that Next is E, experiment E, question number 5. Here either slide or photograph can be kept of the disease causing organism, entamoeba, plasmodium, ascaris and trichophyton. Out of these four, so out of these four, any one will be kept. So you need only, your work is to go to the microscope, observe it, find out, write the name of the organism in your uh, answer script and write what disease it causes. So if you write those two, you will get two marks there very easily next is question number six that is experiment f so here also either specimen photograph or model will be kept or chart also can be kept so what all will be kept under that different adaptations that is hydric adaptations xeric adaptations all that will be asked pedigree charts all that will be asked under this next as i told you viva was so here also you need to identify the given Material F is identified as so and so and you have to write two points under that. Question number seven is viva questions. So I, as I told you out of 34 will be asked. So you need to answer it very well. Next is practical record evaluation. So based on how neat your practicals is, recorders, have you filled in everything? Have you drawn the diagrams neatly? Have you written in a systematic manner? Have you labeled it well? Have you wrapped the record very well? Overall, have you maintained the record? Have you written all the experiments based on that? Six marks will be given to you. So this was about the introduction to the syllabus and the question paper and all that. So all the best for your new academic year as a second PUC biology student. 
So we shall meet again in the coming sessions with the chapters and all that. Thank you.